Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about my most favorite topic, artificial intelligence, also known as AI, and how AI can be used in medicine. The researchers at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine released research that shows that they developed an AI robot that can learn surgery by watching other surgeons' videos. Ready? Let's get started. The well-known AI is ChatGPT. It's a generative AI that uses machine learning to process large amounts of data and also human language to actually learn and teach itself on how to process human language and also to communicate with humans. Today, AI programs have used text and also language to learn. However, the researchers at Johns Hopkins, my alma mater, recently revealed that they have developed an AI robot capable of doing surgeries now, robots doing surgery is not new. We have, for example, the Da Vinci robot. The Da Vinci robot is a human-driven or surgeon-driven platform that allows micro surgeries to be done with precision, such as urology, ENT, neurosurgery, and other surgeries that require microsurgery precision. However, to date, robotic surgeries have been driven by human hands, meaning that the surgeon sits and controls the robot and controls the movement and what the robot does. What's different about Johns Hopkins robot is that it's an AI driven robot that uses video for learning. So this robot can actually watch a video, learn, and then pick up skills. It's still in the early stages. However, it's going to, within probably the next 10 years, be a mainstay in surgery for many types of surgeries. So let's take a look at these videos and see what this robot can do. One of the most difficult things in surgery is to actually learn how to pick up a needle and drive it. So this robot made a mistake, didn't pick up the needle properly. It makes the proper adjustments and able to pick up the needle. That is amazing. When I was learning surgery, if I couldn't pick up a needle, it could take multiple tries before I learned. So how did I practice? I practiced while I was home. I picked up a needle driver. I then picked up the needle, learned how to handle the needle, manipulate the needle. It took probably dozens and dozens of tries to perfect that. This robot was able to perfect it within one mistake. The concept of out of distribution operation is that a human surgeon has to operate in different settings. So for example, if I have to operate as an eye surgeon on the lid versus the conjunctiva versus the sclera or even the retina, these similar skills that I learn will have to transfer to different tissues and environments. So they wanna test if this robot is still able to handle the needle in a different environment. In this case, they put a sponge and let's take a look. Okay, so now the robot is going to look at knot tying videos and then try to replicate that knot tying here in this video. It made a mistake, now it's gonna make an adjustment and the second time around, it's gonna get it right. I think that's amazing. Uh, one of the most frustrating things as a eye surgeon is when I train other eye surgeons and they can't tie a knot. And literally I had one doctor who was one of my attendings when I was training at the University of Iowa. He would say, okay, you have 30 minutes and then it's my turn and I take over the case. And so I did that too as an eye surgeon staff where my residents would operate and I said, okay, you have 30 minutes to finish this case. If not, then I'm going to take over because for the sake of patient safety and also reduce surgical times lead to better outcomes for patients. This robot was able to learn how to do one single throw of a knot by watching it once and then completing it here successfully with two tries. So similar to the out of distribution situation that we saw previously, they're gonna to try to throw this situation with a pork loin and see if the robot's able to do it. It made a mistake, it adjusted. 
So what's fascinating about this is that that's real tissue. That's a, a pork tissue that basically you can see that the robot had trouble initially because the suture would move a little bit because the tissue is flexible, is pliable, but it was able to make the adjustments. And this looked like very similar to human hands when we were doing surgeries and the suture would move just a little bit because the tissue's moving or the patient may be moving a little bit because they're breathing or where we're operating, the, the suture is moving just a little bit and we have to make those adjustments in order to throw that first throw. So, wow. In medicine, there's a concept of see one, do one, and then teach one. And that's how we were taught in medicine and that's medicine across the board. So you watch an attending do something, and then you do that procedure, and then you now know how to do it, you can actually teach someone else. And that's how medicine knowledge is propagated. But essentially, that's what's happening here with these AI robots from Johns Hopkins. They are watching one, they are doing one, and eventually they will be teaching surgeries to surgeons. Now, are they gonna be able to do surgery? I think so. Absolutely. I think within 10 years, we're going to see these machines be able to do surgery by watching advanced surgeons do their surgeries, learn from them. And I'm afraid that I may be out of a job. I am thankful that I am within 10 years of retirement and I have no idea what's entailed for medicine. I see a lot of upsides and also downsides as well as ethical things that need to be considered and also fleshed out before these robots actually turn on and become the terminator of surgeons. I'll be back. It's crazy. For one thing, doing surgery takes a surgeon or somebody to know the parameters to determine if the patient needs surgery or not. Can that be done by a robot? It could be if the robot was programmed to know the criteria. For example, I do a lot of cataract surgeries. And so one of the things that I look for in cataract surgeries, whether the patient is ready for cataract surgery or not, is vision loss. Is the vision decline? Are they having glare? Are they having double vision? Are they having problems with daily living? So a robot could assess that if they knew the criteria. So they could determine whether or not a patient was ready for surgery or not. And if they are, they could do the surgery or hand it off to another surgical robot. Those are things that need to be determined and programmed and worked out and tested and lots of research. So I think that's gonna take a while. Now, here's another consideration. A robot may not know every permutation to complications to surgery. So a good surgeon is not one who can just complete a surgery fast and efficiently. A good surgeon is somebody who can actually get out of complications. So when there are problems, let's say the patient moved or the tissue didn't respond as expected or a blood vessel was located in an abnormal place and it started bleeding a lot, a good surgeon knows how to handle those situations and get out of trouble. The problem is, is the robot going to have enough experience, programming, and also machine learning to handle all those permutations and all those complications that could arise? So do we have a surgeon on backup? Do we have a human surgeon sitting in the back watching the surgery or in their office or available to answer any questions that the robot has or to basically help out the robot if the robot gets in trouble? Here's a problem. Let's consider a surgeon who's top notch, but in order to be top notch, they have to maintain their skills by seeing patients. But over the years, their patient population dwindles because the robot is doing all the surgeries. Then they get fat. And then the surgeon gets fatter and fatter and lazier and out of shape. So over many decades of this, the surgeon may be fat and lazy and just in the corner, unable to do surgery and bail out the robots because we have primarily robots doing surgery. These are all medical ethical consideration that our society has to consider. We need to find out solutions to these problems. On the flip side of this, YouTube has become the largest database for surgical complications ever in the history of humankind. Because we have surgeons from around the world uploading their videos and teaching and showing people how to get out of trouble. So therefore, YouTube can be used to teach these robots. So literally, these robots can be sitting there watching YouTube videos all day and night, 24 seven, and probably in a few years, become better surgeons than the average new surgeon that's graduating from a surgical residency. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like, share, and comment. And also remember to subscribe so that you get notifications for future videos.
Until next time, have a wonderful day.